again with another installment of Service Autopilot's version three training and how to. So in our previous videos, we went through how to actually go out and create a estimate email and an estimate acceptance email. So what this video here is next is we're building a foundational setup, setup and how to actually go out and create a estimate workflow inside Service Autopilot inside version three is once we've built out our estimate email, the email that sends out the estimate um, to our client with a clickable link, and we've created the estimate uh, acceptance email, we need to now go in and create uh, foundationally our estimate grid where the pricing is shown, and then we need to actually build out our estimate document. So we're gonna dive in and actually show you how to do that. Um, I'm gonna pop the screen over here and dive right in. So this is the new version of V3. Uh, that you're looking at right now and I'm gonna pull this off the screen here just so uh, we can open it up a little bit more but the idea here is once we are in version 3 we want to go in and create the estimate grid and then create the estimate documents we've already created the estimate email and the acceptance email for the um, estimate as well so the first thing here we do is go into the gear icon and we're gonna go into grids so we're gonna click on the estimate grid and I'm going to add a grid. So we're going to build this actually right out from scratch. We're not going to pull it off the marketplace. You'll notice there's name, quantity, rate, and amount. So what we're going to be uh, suggesting as best practice is going in and removing um, quantity and rate for a simple landscape maintenance or home cleaning estimate. Now, uh, there may be some different viewing or different contracts where we may want to show the quantity and rate. But in this example, I'm going to actually pull quantity and rate off. And I'm going to do that by removing the rate down here, and I'm going to remove the quantity. Uh, also, as best practice, we traditionally do not keep sales tax total and subtotal in here, so we don't have that sticker shock. So I'm going to scroll down here and toggle these off. So all we have is basically this, uh, this main grid. Now, what we may want to do is type in here and change this to service um name so that is totally uh customizable and it's a drag and drop so we could potentially change the order if you wanted to as well um, so it is fully customizable not a great example for this but in custom grid here um, we can go in where it says table we can also make this a paragraph if you want that to look different uh to be previewed not exactly uh the service that would be applicable for but i know in our several of our deep dives we have created a paragraph view but in this example we're going to go into um the actual grid build out like this here and i'm going to show the grid line so this is how I'm, i want my um grid to be and then i'm actually going to go in and label it facebook live example so we know what it is and I'm going to scroll down and hit save. So foundationally, we need that grid before we actually go into the gear icon in the document editor to actually create the estimate document. So once we have this in, now this will give us the ability to create an estimate document. Since we already have the email and the um, acceptance email, we're going to go in and add a document. And the document type is going to be a estimate. So once this loads, I will be able to click in here and select the estimate type, and then we're gonna name it. And there's gonna be a, uh, a series of things that are gonna open up here. So watch when we hit an estimate here, uh, screen just got exponentially longer. So I'm gonna call this my Facebook Live estimate document. Uh, we could put a description in here and a subject. The estimate email is we're going to connect the estimate email that we actually um, created yesterday. So we would go in and grab that estimate email. And we have our estimate email, I'm not sure if this is the exact one, but we use it for proof of concept, and our estimate confirmation email that we made uh, in a previous video. So let's see if we have this. This is our estimate acceptance email, Facebook Live from yesterday. 
So what we've done here is now um, we're going to use the billing email as the default, or we can use the contact email by default. And this is all our information that we need. So once we go in, we conclude the PDF, we're going to hit save and we'll actually go into the estimate document. So sequentially as you're building these, you want to make sure you build it in a sequential order so you have those documents when you need to create the estimate document itself. So estimate email, acceptance email, estimate grid, and then we're going to go in and use a blank template in our drag and drop builder. And we're going to pull a couple uh, lines in here as a proof of concept of how to build this out. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into content and drag in an image, and I'm going to pull in our company logo. And we're going to insert that in. And the next thing we're going to do is bring in some text. And this is where we're going to go in and potentially put um, at company name. at company address. At company city, New York and at company zip. So we have that broken out here and then we may want to go in and drop that down and then maybe take the next area here and add in another row and go in and take this area and add text. So we have the client's name and information in here. So we have at Let's double check what that is, but that merge is when hit A is that will merge that in for you. So I'm going to uh, see what that is before we grab it. Um, I believe it is client's name, uh, but I may be mistaken. Client email, client first name. So let's see if this pulls up. At client last name. At client and we're going to try to pull in address at service address and one thing we have a lot of custom fields this will definitely slow the process down so I'm actually going to merge tags. It might be a little bit easier. Uh, but you, you kind of get the idea. You want to um, basically go in and grab your information and plug this in here. So one of the things in here, we've got several thousand um, Things here, but I'm going to put in physical address. I'll just put state in that. But the idea here is we've got now two boxes for the contact information. So if you want to say offset one of these here, um, justify it all the way to the right, you can do that as well, um, just so they're kind of offset, or you can stack them on top of each other. Completely up to you. Uh, we've seen it both ways. So next thing we would probably do is go in and grab another roll, a row in here, and type in some text. So at client name, and you put some verbiage in here. It's been a pleasure to submit your estimate. Um, please click the information down below. So what we may want to do is go into these two boxes here. It's the tradition that we do. We build this out, and we'll add in uh, some content there, and we'll add in text here and here. And right here is step number one.
check services that you want and step number two accept and sign at bottom of estimate so obviously this is really plain text right now so we want to kind of click into this uh, area and when we click into the whole thing here it's going to give us here the ability for column one and column two so column one um, i'm going to go in and color this up so if i can go in here i'm going to match up some colors i'm going to grab uh, a real light or darker blue here and this one here so i click into it this area here column two i'm going to do the green color that's defaulted obviously you want to match these up now Obviously, we've got some issues here because our text is not standing out. So we'd want to go in and customize the color of the text here in white, potentially, and bump it out to maybe 16 and center the text. So that's going to highlight the back of it. So if we don't want to highlight the black of it, we can go in and click the area here and actually make the text color white. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to go in and grab the A for text color, bump this out to 16, center it, and bold it. So real basic proof of concept, but obviously you get the idea. So the next thing is um, we would enter the text in here, obviously, for the time of the video. I'm not going to go into that detail. Next thing, we'd probably bring in another row, and right underneath that, these two rows, you're probably going to want to go into content and grab your dynamic content. Now, when you do that in here, we need to go in and click in this, and then to the far right, we are going to have our Facebook Live Grid. So we can drag that in and make sure you have the associated. That's where the pricing is going to live, and it will be laid out exactly the way um, we did in that grid to show you the pricing. So the next thing we're doing is in the row here, we're going to go in and grab content. We're going to add some more text. So this is where your contract terms and things would live. And then we'd probably have one more row underneath that uh, where we can go in. So we have our contract terms, et cetera, here. Uh, billing terms. And then in the next tax box here, uh, we're going to go in and grab some content. Once again, we're going into text, laying that in here, and delete, and we want to go to merge tags. And this is where we're going to put in our signature line. here and that is that line of code you're going to need for that design so um, that is some of the basic features and functions of how we set up the structure of the estimate document there are some other things in here that we'll go through quickly um, we showed you how to add an image how to add a text if you wanted to add some clickable buttons we can go in and drop some additional um, areas here we can go in and go to content and drag a button here and once you type into the text here you can actually um, type into it so call us now and this one here could be text us now so if they're on their mobile they can uh, literally click that button and it'll call or text and what you would do is while we're in there we have the option open a web page send an email make a call or text so this one's going to be text we'd enter the phone number we want to be texted in there. And same thing with call us now, we would go in and make call, enter the phone number here, and that would be the option there. So the next thing is under content, uh, we've covered dynamic content, divider is just that, and social links are going to be able to go in and 
um, bump out your social media. When you click into it, it gives you the ability for several different options as far as how you want the icons to look. And then you would put in your URL of your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, or any other icons that you have. Now these can be turned on or off as well. So depending on the social media you're using, it is there. And then the final one is under content. Uh, we have separate videos how to do this, but if you want to go in and embed a video, uh, HTML block or other features can be done. And this is the HTML code right here where you insert the HTML code from say YouTube and put it right in there and you have a video that plays live inside your estimates. So um, those are the basic features that you need to set up. First thing you want to do is build your dynamic grid or your estimate grid or dynamic content or one in the same. Go into estimate documents, connect your estimate email, your estimate acceptance email. Go in here, set up the framework, customize it, and then drag your dynamic content in and connect it. Once you save this, anytime you come back into this document, you should always be deleting this dynamic content, dragging a new content in, and then selecting the appropriate content grid here because once you go in to edit this document it will um, usually break the link and if you have a line of code there and no pricing showing that is the issue you've gone in and edited it without deleting it and reconnecting the dynamic content so uh, this should get you a foundational starting point in version three to have a successful estimate workflow inside service autopilot